but I know you're smart kids. I'm going to give you a very difficult question right now. How many sides are there on a triangle? Three. So I'm going to draw me a triangle right here. That was the difficult question. That is page 51. You are looking at it right now. Yes, you don't have the fun font. There's a triangle, yes? What sides have we dealt with before we talked about trig? We had the hypotenuse, and we had the leg and the leg, right? That's Pythagoras. And then what did we change the legs to? Opposite and adjacent, depending on what? Depending on where I am, yes? So if I am down here, oh, wait, 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 whoa, 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 wait, wait, I said wait, gray hair, glasses, haunting eyes, my eyes aren't blue, I know. None of you have looked anyway. You wouldn't know if my eyes were blue or not. Brown eyes. And a winning smile. And a sticky out tongue. If I am down there, what is this leg? Opposite. What is this leg? Adjacent. Excellent. Now, what if... My good friend Tanisha is up here. Tanisha has long red hair. And I haven't looked at Tanisha's eyes. But she does have her winning smile. And she too is sticking her tongue out. Huh? Wait, you have braces, don't you? Didn't you? At some point in my teaching of you, you had braces, right? Excellent. I won't put them in because she doesn't have them now. Now, what is this side? This side is O, and this side is what? A. a. So we are comfortable with legs, opposites, and adjacents, yes? What is the side that we have not talked about yet, trigonomic trigonometrically speaking? We have not talked about the hypotenuse. But you guys aren't stupid, right? Because you know that that hypotenuse is part of every theta, isn't it? Right? I know the theta of this guy is O and A, but also that hypotenuse is part of it. And I know that theta has an O and A, but it also has a hypotenuse. So we indeed use two other trig ratios. Actually, there's eight other trig ratios. I lie. There's 12. I, I lie. Oh, there's 12, no, I lie. 14 other trig ratios. You guys will use two other trig ratios this year, so have no fear. Oh, and next year you'll only use two. But in grade 12, look out. So, you guys are smart kids. The other trig ratios deal with the hypotenuse, okay? Hypotenuse which I am now going to start abbreviating as hype because it's too hype. <laughs> the hypotenuse gets its own ratios. But you guys are smart kids. Tanisha will have two ratios for the hypotenuse, one with the A and one with the O, yes? I will have two ratios, one with the A and one with the O. Will they be the same? Of course not. So let's say what they are. The first of those ratios is the sine ratio, which on your calculator is the sin button. Naughty. The, <laughs> the sine ratio, and I'm going to write it in red because red's a naughty color. The sine ratio compares the length of the 
opposite side. What does opposite mean? Across to the length of the hypotenuse. So it's opposite and hypotenuse. So you guys being the smart kids that you are, what must the cosine ratio be? Absolutely. And the cosine ratio, look on your calculator. What's it short for? Cos. It's the cos button. And it compares the length of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Okay? Okay. That sets up this pretend fake word. Sokatoa. It doesn't mean anything. But if you had been in grade 10 in 1990, like I was in grade in 1990, and you were living in a world that was not the same as it is today, you might have said to your teacher, that sounds like a word in Japanese. But it isn't. I said it sounded like there was a ninja doing math. Sokatoa! And my teacher was like, that's pretty funny. But now, nobody says that joke. So, Sokatoa. What does that stand for? Sine uses opposite and hypotenuse. Cos uses adjacent and hypotenuse. And tan uses opposite and adjacent. Now, whoopsie. I want all of you in this nice blank space you have. You guys have it below. I have it beside. Please draw a triangle. Big enough to fill up the space. I have to make it this big. You can make it a different size. If you have two colors, it would be useful. If you don't, it's no big deal. Um, label this triangle. A, B, and C. Why did I use capitals? Because the angles get capitals, the sides get lowercase letters. Which letter goes where? What is this guy? His BC before grade 10. What do we call them now? Little a, because it's across from big A. What's this guy? Little b. Little b. What's this guy? Little c. Everybody cool? All right. Now, knowing what you know, I want you to tell me six things. I want you to tell me the ten... Uh, the sine, the cos, and the tan of A. You have no numbers, so you'll have to use letters. Would anyone like to volunteer the sign of A? It is what, Emily? Pardon me? You were right, because I heard you whisper it. I just want to make sure. Yes, it is little a over little c. Why? Because opposite over the hypotenuse. Cool? So what is cos of A? Little, little b over little c. And what is the tan of A? Little a over little b. Right? Everyone agrees, yes? That's where I was standing. 
My good friend Tanisha is up here. So I need also to be able to do the sine of B, the cos of B, and the tan of B. What are they? Little b over little c. Hey, wait a minute. The cos of a is little b over little c. But the sine of b is little b over c. No way. way. So what is going to happen here? a over c. Shut up your face. And what is b going to be? b over a. Oh, my good gravy. Math having a pattern? Son of a b. What are we ever going to do about this? Son of a little b. What does what say? It says B over C, A over C, and B over A. Everybody good? Now, do you think anything changes in our methods when we are pushing a button that isn't tan? Do you think anything else changes? Or does only the button that we push change? Only the button changes. So let us look at this triangle that we have right here. I have now told you that it is exactly the same as doing tangent. So when you were faced with a tangent question, what, did, what was the first thing we did? We checked if we had a theta. Do we? What is it? 12. Then we looked at what we had. What do I have on this triangle? I have an hypotenuse of what? 25. And what do I need to find? Opposite, which equals x. Now, instead of only using tan, I have to decide if I'm going to use sine, cos, or tan. What am I going to use? Why am I going to use sine, Emma? Because you have the opposite. Because I have a hypotenuse and an opposite. And I do exactly the same thing, except what button do I push? Sin, not tan. So I get sine theta equals O over H. And then I just fill in my numbers. Sine, what was theta? 12 equals O X over 25. How do I solve that? Multiply 25 sine 12 equals. And you've got to figure out how to do that on your machine. Remember, if it's a backwards calculator, it's 25 times 12 sine. If it's a forwards calculator, it's 25 times sine 12. What is the answer? 5.2 sounds just about right to me. Yes. Can everybody do trigonometry? Tanisha. That depends. Do you have a forward or a backwards calculator? I have to ask this every time. So you do this backwards. You do 12 sine times 25 equals. Okay. No problem. Remember, what is the most likely culprit if you do not get 5.2 here? What is most likely wrong with your machine? It's in the wrong mode, or you divided when you should have multiplied. One of them you can fix with practice. One of them you need to fix by paying attention. There's a difference. Everybody can do that one? So that should be the end of that page, right? You guys have the next three are on that page? Okay. 
So let's look at this first one. Some of you may already have done it. Do the rules change? Of course not. Do I have a theta? What is it? 19. What else do I have? I have an adjacent of 40. How do I know that 40 is adjacent? I see 40 and x. They're both right beside 19. Why is x not adjacent? Because x is the hypotenuse. That side already has a special name. He doesn't get to have 2. That's not fair. So h is what? X, so then I sort it out. Cos, why did I use cos? Because I had A and H. Cos of 19 equals A, 40, over H, X. Letters on the bottom, what math is that? Divide 40 over cos 19 equals. And you figure that out on your machine. Kirsten, what is it? Because you have a backwards calculator, so I'm going to pick on you. Forty divided by nineteen cos equals. 42.3. That is correct. What is weird about this one? You don't have an angle. As soon as you see that, what does that mean? I need an angle. So it's shift whatever I'm going to use. Now, yesterday it could only be shift tan, yes? Today it can be shift sine, cos, or tan, depending on what you need. Do you think anything else changes? Of course not. Your theta is x. You don't know. What do you have? An adjacent of what? 13 and an hypotenuse of 22. A and h is cos. Cos shift cos of x equals 13 over 22. How do I punch that into my machine? Depends on my machine. For most of you, it is shift cos bracket 13 divided by 22 close brackets equals. For some of you, it's bracket 13 divided by 22 close brackets shift Cos, and you may or may not need to hit equals. What is the answer? Fifty-three point seven. Fifty-three point seven is exactly correct. Except, what do we we round angles to fifty-four degrees? Who can remember why we round angles? I only said it. I never wrote it down. But was anybody paying enough attention? Oh, well. Sometimes I like to think that when I speak, somebody listens. Angles are not measured in decimals. Angles are measured in minutes and seconds, like time. So you can't put a decimal on them. Tanisha. The one in red? Pick up your calculator. Punch four. Punch zero. Punch divided by. Punch 19. Punch cos. Punch equals. Ah, you didn't tell your calculator to do any work. For which? You got 41.8? You have a backwards calculator. Push 40. 
divided by 19 cos equals. Now look on your screen and make sure that you have a D or a DEG. There you go. Push the DRG button until you have a D or a DEG on your screen. Anybody else in the boat that Jacob was in? You're punching the right buttons, but you were not getting those numbers. Everyone is sorted? You guys, do you have one more? You do not, do you? All right. I don't want you to do the puzzle sheets yet. You are not to do the puzzle sheets. You are to get out your blue book. And you are to do page... I need to check in my... Blue. Why are there jeans on my desk? <laughs> Who? What, what, what of you is leaving your pants here? I am not leaving my pants here. I am not fitting in those pants. Well, maybe the legs. I've got really short legs. I don't, well, they're pretty girly. They got a weird pocket design thing. I would say they're a girl pair of jeans. Outdoor research. Size two. Yeah. I'm no size two. I don't even think size two really exists. I think it's a lie. Size zero doesn't exist because zero means zero. It means nothing. That means you're not there. So why would you need pants? Actually, that's not true. Size zero exists because North Americans have gotten fatter and fatter and fatter and fatter. And nobody wants to feel bad about themselves. My wife is no different than she was 25 years ago. Yet, she is in the exact... She is in a smaller size than she was then. She's the exact same person. It's ludicrous. You are working on page... Dun, dun, dun. These pages aren't numbered. Son of a bee. 95 and 101. Yeah. Oh, but they're not, they're titled with numbers, but that's actually page two and page three of the book. So 95 and 101 is your homework. You start it now. If you can answer those questions on the page in your book, go ahead. If you wish to use your own paper, go ahead. Yes, William. You don't have...